This is you every time at the airport waiting in distress when your flight gets cancelled. Or this is you waiting long queues to get transaction done at the bank. You ought to be at the exclusive side of life where we understand the luxury of time and privacy going beyond to give you the best customer experience. From the ambience of our lounges with your favorite meals and drinks to keep you relaxed on your travels. To the comfort of our branch lounges to help you get your transactions done quickly and in style with a personal account officer. You can also use our priority service to fast track all your transactions. As an exclusive plus member, you also enjoy unlimited access to all our lounges in over 1,200 locations around the world. Free tickets to movie premieres, art exhibitions and concerts, 24 seven access to medical experts, discounts on luxury hotels and restaurants. Join exclusive plus today. Visit our website to get started. Access more than banking. I see a light inside of you. So let it shine. It's time to spread your wings and fly. Reach for the sky. Get up, get up, don't let nothing hold ya. Get up, get up right now, right now. Get up, get up, don't let nobody tell you that you can't. There is greatness inside of you. Pregnancies can come with a lot of concerns and questions. This is why you need fully trained medical professionals to help you address them at any time of the day. Why wait for your next appointment when you can have 24-7 access to board-certified experts throughout your pregnancy journey with Preclass? Preclass is designed to guarantee a pleasant pregnancy experience with amazing benefits such as weekly parenting classes that cover everything on pregnancy, childbirth, postpartum care for you and your baby. Sign up for Preclass today and enjoy the ultimate support every pregnant woman deserves. Are you a worker and need a financing for your business, home, car needs? gadgets or do you just need extra cash to sort your need we at access bank understand how difficult this may be that's why we have tailored solutions to ensure your needs are easily and speedily our everyday banking products provide a variety of easy loan repayment plans to salary earners 
We offer digital loans for I'm tired of trying. I need help. I want to try IVF. I know it's expensive. struggling with a health challenge. Do you need financial help to access treatment? If yes, apply now for MHSS, the Maternal Health Service Support, a discounted loan by the W Initiative of Access Bank with low interest rates, no loan fees, flexible repayment plan. This is your best bet for financing your health needs. For more information, visit our website on www.vwcommunity.com or any Access Bank branch nationwide. You can also send an email to wcares at accessbankplc.com. Terms and conditions apply. The MHSS has successfully financed hundreds of health procedures. The next one could be yours. Business women can now access a flexible vehicle finance loan specially designed with their interests at heart. Are you a woman in business or do you know a woman in business who is interested in purchasing a vehicle? If your answer is yes to any of these two questions, then this message is for you. With our exciting loan offers, women in business can now purchase brand new or pre-owned vehicles from the bank's approved vendors with an equity contribution as low as 10%, a competitive interest rate of 15%, and a tenor of up to 48 months. To get started, send us an email on wcares at accessbankplc.com. Share the good news and get on board. Mommy, my tummy hurts so much. I'm scared. It is well, my daughter. Please, if I'm scared. We should be at your store already. Why can't we use one of these cars? Hmm. Who will drive it? You? Ah, sis, so you can't drive yet. I beg, leave me. Don't tell Fukos, Joe. Book that ride. It is important that women do not only learn how to drive, but to fully understand the driving rules and be a professional on the road. Good morning, madam. Good morning. This road is a one way. <laughs> Where did you learn how to drive? This is why the W Initiative of Access Bank has partnered with the Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, to provide intensive driving training for women across Nigeria at very discounted rates, as well as other amazing offers, such as the driver's license processing assistance. Check out our social media pages at the W community or send an email to wcares at accessbankplc.com. Do not miss out on this opportunity. Hurry now and let's get you driving. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening. Thank you all for making time out to join this exclusive masterclass powered by Access Bank W Community and Baby Migo. The W Community is an initiative committed to catering to women of different cadres, women in business, women in the workspace, women in family, Gen Zs, millennials, anyone. So far, you are a woman. The W Community is here for you to help you acquire financial and lifestyle needs across various segments, including healthcare and maternal care services. Hence, this amazing partnership with Baby Migo, Nigeria's largest parenting community, whose goal is to make life easier through all the stages of pregnancy and parenthood. Guys, before we continue, would you, I would like to know a few things about our amazing audience. You know, without you, we wouldn't be here. So please, Leave a comment in the chat box 
on your location and your current status. Like, would like to know if you're a new mom, a new dad, an OD in the game, if you have like one, two, three, four, five children, or if you're expecting. And also, if you're single and just here to gain knowledge, you know, nothing is wasted. You would also agree that one cannot fully over prepare for a baby and the information gathered from the various sources you go to can never be wasted. So thanks to this W community and baby partnership, the baby prep masterclass aims to provide guidance for overall well-being in pregnancy. The topics to be discussed today will fall under three categories, understanding miscarriages and lowering the risk of miscarriage in pregnancy, nutrition in pregnancy, and also prepping your body for labor and birth. It's power packed and you would not want to miss out on anything. So while we get ready for this masterclass, please do well to use the links drops in the chat box to follow the W community and Baby Migo on all our social platforms. And guys, there's a giveaway currently going on the W community page. And you know, Mother's Day is around the corner. You would want to be pampered. So let W community pamper you. So join the train, follow, engage. And also you stand a chance of getting exclusive discounts to some of the products offered by um, Baby Migo. For example, there's a preg preg class currently ongoing and it's an antenatal support program for pregnant women. The support covers throughout your pregnancy and even three weeks postpartum. It's, it's something juicy and you would not want to miss out on this. So do well to join the train, follow, engage on all the social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and also our web services. So guys, are you ready? Are you? Please let me know if you're ready and we can continue. I hope you have your pen and your paper handy to just think down as a lot of information will be shared and you will not want to miss out on anything. Also, please keep your questions ready and handy as we will get to it at the end of the masterclass. Yes, yeah? so before I go now, kindly drop your favorite emojis in the chat box to show how excited you are for this masterclass. Are you ready? Are you excited? Because I am and we cannot wait to get started. So I would go on to the welcome address, which will be delivered by Kemi Olawe, the founder of Baby Migo. So Kemi, up to you. The stage is, is yours. Please let's hear and listen to you welcome address. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deborah. Good afternoon, moms and dads. My name is Kemi Olawoye, and I am the co-founder and the CEO of Baby Migo. We are delighted to have you join us today for the W Baby Prep Masterclass, hosted by Access Bank W Initiative in partnership with Baby Migo. Um, first, I'd like to thank the Access Bank W Initiative team for their tireless and continued efforts towards promoting the health and well-being of women, evident through this partnership. For those of you who are new to Baby Migo, Baby Migo is Nigeria's fastest growing pregnancy and parenting community. We provide expecting moms like you and parents with access to expert-led and state-based tools, resources, and services to empower and equip you on your pregnancy and parenting journey. In today's masterclass, we have assembled an expert panel of medical professionals, and they will be taking you through various topics around antenatal care and wellness. One thing that we're very sure of is that today's session is going to prove invaluable to you as an expectant mom or dad. It is also worth noting that what we're going to be discussing here today um, is just a snippet of what you can expect to gain from our comprehensive online antenatal program, PreClass. Deborah spoke a bit about that earlier. And PreClass provides antenatal classes, access to experts, community support, and so much more. And we're going to be sharing a bit more about that as we go along today. Um, I'm also excited to share 
that there's an exclusive discount for W community members. So ensure that you um, keep up with the chat in the chat box so that you can get all the details and all the information. So thank you once again for joining us. We're very excited to have you here and we hope that you find today's session both informative and empowering. My name is Kemi Olawoye. We're pleased to have you here. Over to you, Deborah. Thank you, thank you so much. I, I'm joining, like I'm rushing right now to go and check what is going on because I need that discount. <laughs> so um, I'll be welcoming the team lead, W Health Segment Women Banking team, Ointa Molao Ebola, to introduce this amazing W community that we've just been hearing about. Over to you, Oinda. Thank you so much, Deborah. Thank you all for joining today. I'll be introducing the W Initiative by Access Bank to all of us. Uh, please stay tuned. All right. All right. So my name is Oinda Mola, and I'm the lead for the health segment of the W Initiative at Access Bank. And I'll just be sharing with all of us today, both the preg bombs and the expectant dads on the call today, on why Access Bank is the bank of choice for women. And um, I'd just like to give a bit of background to why we started the W Initiative. And um, some time ago, um, in 2006, we said, okay, let's delve into the women's market. Let's understand the women's need. Let's try to see how we can close the gender gap and support the SDG 5 on gender equality. And we did this um, in partnership with the World Bank and the International Finance Corporation. And that led to us having um, a gender empowerment program for women, where we thought we could support women with financial needs financial support for their business needs, and even providing technical advisory um, services to support um, the growth of their business. And it was a wonderful um, project. And we learned two things, that women are good borrowers, and women are very accountable. And based on that, we further went into deeper research to understand um, the needs of women. And we understood that women are multidimensional. They're not just a, a, a one size fits all. And uh, we understood that women's needs go beyond just business. And that led to this robust initiative that is called W Initiative that was launched in 2014. And like we like to say, W is the home for everything that Access Bank has to offer women. And we've been growing tremendously. We're now present in 10 African countries, and our mission is to inspire, connect, and empower women. As you can see on my slide, you can see beautiful women on this slide, women in business, women professionals, those are women in the workplace, women and family, that is women that are focused on the home front, catering to their family. And we have the millennials and Gen Z, and of course, the quintessential women who is really about influencing a community. So if you fall within any of these five segments, you are special to the W community. And I'll be sharing more on what you can enjoy, you know, from being part of the W community. And let me start with the maternal health service support. A very, uh, it's our flagship project or program, and it's very dear to our hearts. It's been touted to be the baby making product of the bank. And it just provides a discounted health financing support for your pregnancy journey, for your fertility journey, and for your overall wellness. And what we have done is to partner with over 40 fertility clinics across the country to ensure that women can access quality health care. And um, one thing that is beautiful about this um, product is that it was the first product that was uh, all inclusive that is catered to salary earners and business owners um, and again another thing we've also done in the wellness and health journey is to ensure that confidentiality is strictly observed you know during the onboarding process another thing you should also know about this product is that you can access up to four million naira in loans to pay for your medical bills I'm sure you, you agree with me, you know, that accessing healthcare can be very expensive. 
That's why when you're trying to have a baby, you have to go through multiple, multiple IVF cycles, you know, or there's an emergency and you did not plan for that um, unexpected bill, that huge bill. And this is where MHSS comes in. It is for every woman who is um, about her health, who is about, you know, paying for her, her health um, service without thinking about um, uh, 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 where to borrow money from and all of that and talking to neighbors. So MHSS is your go-to for fertility treatment, child delivery services, both local and international. Fibroid treatments, that's another issue facing a lot of women. Um, and these products actually caters to that. Bariatric treatment, that is weight loss, to get your confidence back after having your baby, or you just want to be healthy, you can access this loan. And this loan, I've been saying, is discounted, and it's discounted at 14% per annum. Arguably one of the best interest rates you can ever get in the financial services industry. And of course, there's a flexible repayment period for you to pay within 24 months. And another beautiful thing about this product is, it's not just you as a woman that can apply, your husband can apply for you, and even a third party if you do not meet our um, risk acceptance criteria. And again, this beautiful product that you should know is the Ellie Savers account. Where you have your beautiful boy or girl twins, you know, this is a gift that keeps on giving, and it's something that you can give to your child before she is even here or he's here. You can open an Ellie Savers account for your child from in the womb, so even up to 18 years old. And it's very simple. Um, you can open with just 1,000 Naira. You have access to 13 month saving bonus. There's an access to educational loans of up to 5 million Naira. You also get dividends. You can also deposit dividends of up to 10K in the, in the child's name. And it also comes with an interest rate that's your income to you at 5.4%. And I think this is a beautiful product that you can latch on to. Our women professionals, I would say that salary earners are like, the, I don't know, they are, they are just in a world of their own. They get the best deals if you come to banks because just with their salary, they can access a lot of loans, as you can see on the screen. Um, digital loans like the payday loan for emergencies, contingencies, device financing to purchase your gadgets, you know, instant business loan if you have a side hustle and you can get all of this with one account called the everyday banking account. And that is a zero balance account, zero maintenance fee account, all this for free. And I think this is a beautiful um, product that you can latch on to. Um, another loan, while the professionals are getting it all, what W has done is to make, it, make um, access to loans more inclusive for women in business. Um, prior to now, we hear that women in business cannot access some loans because they don't have certain documents, they don't have collateral, they don't have property, but we have introduced various loans to ease and support women at different stages of their businesses. We have the W Power Loan, discounted at 15% per annum. I'm sure this is a beautiful product you don't want to miss out on. You can access up to 100 million Naira as a loan. Flexible collateral from, for loans from 20 million and below. That's, you don't need to provide any form of um, legal mortgage or property. You can use this for working capital requirements. You can use this to purchase your assets. You can use this to expand your business, you know, just achieve your dreams. And then the tenor is also flexible up to 36 months and the minimum um, loan amount is 1 million now. Our uh, Eastern business loan has been covered. It's a digital loan just for those contingencies, those emergencies. You want to clear goods, you can access this six months tenor, um, no collateral at all, and you can get up to 10 million naira on the Eastern business loan. For the vehicle finance, this was a product that um, we introduced last year to so ease the mo mobility needs of women. You know how you launch your business and you can't cater to your customers' needs because you don't have the logistic aspect of, of, of things being covered. So we introduce the opportunity um, to our women in business, you know, to be able to access discounted funding to purchase brand new cars and even pre-owned cars. Equity contribution is low. Equity contribution is 10%. Um, it comes with um, car tracker. You can register your vehicle and can even finance that aspect. The loan tenure for that is 48 months, which is a, a long time 
a, a flexible time period for you to pay conveniently without affecting your business operations. And then for the female salary earners, you know, they complained, I'm not sure I can pay the high rates that we're, we're getting on the auto loan. And then we introduced a 3% discount for female salary earners off the standard interest rate for the auto loan. And, it, and the tenor for female salary earners is even much more accommodating at 54 months. And of course, you can't be talking about enjoying these things without you know, identifying with the W community. And we've designed the W card as a special identity for the W community members. And it works just like your regular debit card. Um, it's, secure, it's secure, it's available in Visa and Verve. You can operate it on POSs, ATMs, and websites. And again, what is different is that you have access to amazing discounts. We have our merchants partners that you can access discounts from. And finally, I think I'm almost rounding up. Yes, so um, the special offers that we have for women that are available currently on this month, and I will speak to the Preg class, and this is the partnership we have with Baby Migo. And it's just a wonderful program that I think everyone on the call should buy into. Um, it covers one year of your pregnancy um, trimester and covers three months postpartum after you've had your baby. And again, as a W committee member, you're getting a whooping 30% discount. And this is available to you in just three steps. You just need to have an access bank account, get your W card and email WCARES at accessbankplc.com for your discount code. And if you already have a bank account, just get your W card. And if you have both, just email us right away so you can get your discount code so you can access this um, prayer class program. And again, on my, on my right, you can see uh, the driving initiative that we launched. And this was just um, a wholesome initiative for us in the sense that we've had cases where driving on the road, women are always looked at as um, the rough riders, they don't know how to drive, you know, they are being bullied on the road and all of that. And we came up with this initiative, you know, and partnered with the Federal Road Safety Corps, you know, to work, um, to work with accredited um, driving schools to provide discounted driving classes for women. And this is the first of its kind in Nigeria, and I guess in Africa. And um, it's available in Lagos, Benin, Abuja, Port Harcourt, Kano, Calabar, Kaduna, and Akwaibo. Another thing that we have done again for our W community, you also get an extra 5,000 Naira discount. That's if you're part of the five, first 500 female account holders to register. So there's a lot. There's so much for you to enjoy. And you will not be enjoying this if you don't even have a bank relationship with us. I would ask that you, you know, to get updates on what we do, you know, to just get updates on the events. We do lots of events, capacity building programs. We're launching our Womenpreneur program in June. I'm sure you should just stay connected with us by following the W community on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And you should subscribe to our channel you should, you should even binge watch some of the programs we've had, our IWD conference, Stella conference, the biggest conference in Nigeria. Don't miss out on that. You should subscribe. And then you can click the notification icon to ensure that you get notified on whenever we're having any events that will be valuable to you. And again, we put our, our we, we, we're very, very um, passionate about women to know that it might not just be a smooth sailing journey for you. There might be hiccups down the road. You need support, you need inquiries, you need resolution on any issues. You can send an email directly to our help desk at wcares at accessbankplc.com and we'll be glad to have you on board. Thank you very much for listening and uh, over to you, Deborah. Wow. I was just nodding my head all through as you were speaking because wow, 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 wow. This is a lot. And I personally, I bank with Access Bank, so I'm rushing to get my W card like ASAP. I don't want to miss out on anything. So guys, I hope you have listened through. Don't miss out on anything. Follow Baby Migor and the W Initiative on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, so that you don't miss out on any of the products that um, any of the discounts listed in 
her presentation. So without further ado, we are going on into the business of today. And I'll be inviting my first speaker. Uh, this is going to be in three parts, as I have previously said, and I'm inviting the first speaker to speak on pregnancy trimesters and what to expect, understanding miscarriages and lowering the risk of miscarriage in pregnancy. So our first speaker is Dr. Daniel Adegbulu. He is a resident obstetrician and gynecologist at Federal Medical Center, Asaba Delta State. He has vast experience dealing and treating female reproductive conditions and cares for pregnant women during and after childbirth. He has carried out successful childbirth deliveries and performed major surgeries that have meaningfully contributed to his success so far in his career. Dr. Daniel is one of our major gynecologists at PrEP class, and he is driven towards women and maternal health care and has been a significant stakeholder in the Nigerian healthcare system with regards to women health. So without further ado, I introduce our first speaker, Dr. Daniel Adigulu. Hello, sir. Thank you for joining in. Thank you for your time today. Please, you have the floor. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Daniel. Okay, okay, okay. Um, we have some technical hitches, so I would be introducing our second speaker for her part, which is nutrition in pregnancy. This is a juicy session and you do not want to miss out on this. So our expert is Nurse Blessing Aware. Nurse Blessing Aware is a registered nurse, a midwife and public health nurse. She currently serves as an in-house nurse at Baby Migo, Nigerian's fastest growing parenting community. She is currently registered with the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria and has acquired a wealth of experience practicing at both federal, state, private hospitals, primary health centers, and NGO. Ms. Blessing is very proficient in general nursing procedures as well as midwifery practices. So, Ms. Blessing, please, you have the floor. Kindly take us through your session. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, good afternoon. Welcome to my session. Thank you. Today, nutrition in pregnancy. Uh, okay, I'll quickly share my screen so we can get into the business of today. All right. Okay. Okay, so welcome everybody. I, I hope this will be a very interesting session. Um, so when you hear nutrition, the only thing that actually really does come to mind is food. So for foodies in the house, I'd like you to make some comments in the comment section. Tell us your favorite food, what you love to eat the most, pictures that you actually put, or foods that you see that gets you like, Hmm, I wish I could have this right now. Let us know in the comment section and let's make this as exciting as possible. So going into it, um, nutrition in its basic term is basically how the food you eat, your body utilizes this food that you eat to provide you the necessary um, nutrients, help to maintain your health, prevent, help you to prevent diseases and bringing it into pregnancy it goes further to how this nutrient affects your baby, helps in development, growth, cognitive function, building of body parts, and everything that has to do with the safety of pregnancy. So you can see how important nutrition in pregnancy is because the kind of nutrition you get in pregnancy automatically affects the health and growth of your baby. So if nutrition has been something you really do not pay so much attention to before now, now you have to pay so much more attention to this because uh, you're not just taking care of you now, you're taking care of your baby. And so moving into good nutrition. So the benefits of good nutrition is 
are so many. There's so many, just numerous, but I'll just highlight a few of them. And the first one is it helps in your baby's development. So you don't want a, a situation where you give birth to your child and your child is beginning to have certain defects or deformities that are, were associated to your poor nutrition in pregnancy. And so having a good nutrition automatically in a lot of ways um, helps your baby to get all that is necessary for adequate growth and development. It also reduces the risk of birth defect that your baby could have. It reduces the risk of certain complications in pregnancy, like gestational diabetes, hypertension in pregnancy, also known as preeclampsia. And hypertension in pregnancy could be so complicated that it could actually um, lead to um, seizures, which could be very det and detrimental to your pregnancy journey. It could also, um, um, good nutrition could also prevent preterm labor. Uh, it also helps the mother to maintain a healthy weight throughout her pregnancy because we've got, got to find out that um, even normally on your um, every every month menstrual cycle, you find that there are certain parts of your period where you don't really have so much appetite. And there are some times where, oh, you see juice, I want to drink this. See ice cream, I want to drink this. I see yogurt, I want to drink this. I want to eat pizza, I want to eat shawarma. And you're craving so, so many things. Now, in pregnancy, the hormones are even behave even worse than they would on, on, on your non-pregnant state. And so your cravings might even be worse to the extent where you might perceive your neighbor's food and you're like, honey, can I have that, please? That's what I'm smelling it from the next compound. I would like to eat it. Or well, honey, can you cook um egg? but just add um, palm oil or granite oil to it. I don't know how you want to do it, but that's what I want to eat. And then you're having so many wonderful cravings and you can't really understand it. But I just hope that this topic helps teach you um, some things to actually just let go of and just try to be more um, focused on actually getting the real deal from your food. Um, it also helps to improve maternal health. Um, also, it helps for a better cognitive function and development of your baby. It also prevents um, anemia, which is low blood volume to a very large extent because you and your baby need a lot of um, uh, blood supply um, this period. So poor nutrition. Poor nutrition has so many um, effects and some of them are it could restrict your baby's healthy growth in that you might have a child or uh, when you go for a scan, you find out that the baby is not um, the size of the baby is not adequate size of um, a baby at that particular gestational age. So maybe your baby, your, your, the pregnancy is seven months, but the size of the child is like that of two months or five months. That is what we call fetal growth restriction. And then uh, other effects of poor nutrition could be birth defects. So um, but poor nutrition could like when you, uh, when I go for that into the topic, I'll I'll tell you some essential nutrients that could actually uh, help you to prevent certain birth defects. It could also lead to preterm birth. That's you give birth before your estimated um, um, delivery date, and this could in turn result in giving birth to a baby with a low birth weight. And so you the baby might have to be admitted after delivery to help nurture the baby until its particular weight before it's being discharged home. And this could actually be a very stressful condition and no mother would really want to go through this. Uh, so it can be prevented by as much as possible by having a good nutrition. And poor nutrition could also cause maternal health problems like I mentioned before, uh, like pre um, gestational diabetes, uh, preeclampsia and, and the likes. So moving on, calorie intake. Now, I know a lot of us that are personally those that have really been on diet or trying to watch what I eat and watching my weight, we actually know a thing or two about calories. So calories can be defined as the amount of energy that you get from um, food or drink, however it might be. And calorie needs um, increase during pregnancy because um, you're not just uh, attending to yourself alone now, you're attending to you and your baby. 
And so your calorie needs actually increase during this period. It actually said that you actually need about 300 to 500 extra calories in pregnancy. Uh, this doesn't mean that you actually need to now eat a whole lot because 300 to 500 seems like, oh, it's so much. No, you can actually get that from extra snacks in between meals, sandwiches, salads, fruits, not a lot though. So this could actually give you the extra um, calories for the day. Doesn't mean that when you serve, for instance, a bowl of a bar, then you have to make it two big bowls that could actually feed four persons because I need to get extra calories. No, you don't need all of that. Uh, so moving on to the macronutrient. Macronutrient simply means the major nutrients that you need for everyday function. And they are majorly three, the carbohydrates, protein, uh, fats. So carbohydrates can be said to be energy-giving foods. Energy-giving foods um, are needed in pregnancy because you'll be needing a lot of energy to help your body processes to continue the way they should. And your baby is also going to be tapping from this energy source that you're providing. So carbohydrates are very essential. Uh, protein are also called bodybuilding foods. They help in repair of tissue. They are essential for growth and development of the fetus. It's also essential in the development of placenta. And so you see that proteins are must be included in your diet. Fats, also help, also serve as an, an alternative source of energy. They also help in your baby's um, brain and nervous development. So these are example of um, food sources for uh, carbohydrates, proteins, um, and fats that you can get. You can see that this can be gotten from a normal family table. So you don't have to do a whole lot to actually get this, this nutrient that you need. It can be gotten from your everyday meals, bread, rice, staple foods majorly are very rich in carbohydrates. And you can them in fish, proteins in fish, in poultry, in um, dairy products, or generally are everywhere in avocados, in um, oils that you use to cook, in fish. So you can literally get these macronutrients in your daily food. Um, moving on to what we call essential nutrients. So essential nutrients um, are nutrients that the body needs for certain vital functions, and not all of them can be produced in the body. So you have to get a lot of them from food. And the first one, which is so important, is folic acid. Folic acid is very important in um, neural tube development. So breaking down what neural tube simply means, it's simply um, the first part of your, of your baby that's formed that divides to form the brain and spinal cord. And this is called the nervous system. And you know, these control every other function in the body. So folic acid helps in this developmental process. And if folic acid is unavailable, it could lead to certain bed defects like spinal bifida. That's where you see that the back of the child is not properly closed. You can still see some in, inner part. It could also cause so many other neural tube defects. And it's advised that when you, um, for mothers or women of childbearing age, or women who would want to get pregnant, that they begin to become more cautious about their diet, especially the intake of folic acid, because you really do not know when you're taking. You don't know when fertilization happens. You just find out that, oh, I didn't see my period. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm stressed. Maybe that's why it's coming late. And then after a while, you go and do pregnancy. And like, oh, I'm pregnant. Now, pregnancy had, has already happened. Development of the baby has already started without you even knowing. So when there are really not enough folic acid um, stores in the body. It could hamper the growth of your child. And so supplements, um, taking um, supplements, prenatal vitamins can start before you get pregnant. It doesn't mean until you get pregnant before you can start your prenatal vitamins. Moving on to iron. Iron is another very essential nutrient that helps in what we call hemoglobin formation. 
which is the oxygen um, carrying capacity of the blood. So basically hemoglobin is attached to red blood cells. So as red blood cells, the blood moves around the body, it distributes oxygen all around the body. And so the air you breathe and the in oxygen enters into your blood with the help of hemoglobin, which is made from iron. So iron is so essential and also helps to prevent anemia. It also helps um, reduce the risk of low bed weight and premature delivery. Now, calcium for people for um, strong bones and teeth. Calcium is your nutrient to go any day, anytime, and you can get this from foods around you, from dairy products especially. They are very, very rich in calcium. It also helps to prevent blood clots and also helps uh, muscles and, and nerve function. Zinc, zinc is in rapid cell growth um, that occurs during pregnancy. Remember, I told you that. The baby undergoes certain divisions um, in the very, especially in the first few days, or weeks of um, um, pregnancy. And so zinc aids this rapid cell growth that differentiates to form different parts of the body. Um, it also helps in um, formation of insulin and enzymes. Insulin, remember, helps in um, regulation of blood glucose in the body. So your blood glucose is not off the charts, leading to a case of diabetes. In pregnancy now vitamin c vitamin c is very common and we know it helps to boost the immune system but it actually does a lot more than that it protects um, body tissues from damage um, it he helps in the absorption of iron which is very vital now in as much as you want to prevent anemia with the use of iron you also need vitamin c that helps your body actually utilize this iron from the food that you eat it also has an antioxidant property that um, helps with anti-aging. So if you want your skin to be looking all nice and clean, vitamin C is also um, a, a way to help your body achieve that. Um, vitamin A also um, helps with good eyesight, prevention of dry eye. It also helps in um, growth and development of your baby. Now, vitamin D, and there are so many vitamins, and this is just a few of them. Vitamin D um, helps your body utilize calcium and phosphorus. So when you get, when you eat a food that contains calcium and phosphorus, vitamin D helps your body to absorb this calcium to be used by your body. So it advised that sometimes when a mother could come out into um, the morning sun to get if a, a little of that morning sun for to activate vitamin D on your skin, which would aid this um, calcium absorption that helps in strong bones and teeth. Vitamin E also helps to the body to form red blood cells, muscles. It also acts as an antioxidant that it has that anti-aging property as well. And then iodine helps in um, brain development and prevention of neurological issues in your baby. It also helps in your thyroid function and prevention of goiter. You've seen some people with swollen under jaw and that's goiter. So it can be a deficiency of iodine. Now moving on to fiber. Fiber is uh, gotten from vegetables, from many foods, um, and it helps in prevention of constipation. It aids bowel movement. And so you are easily able to go to the toilet but then I'm feeling like you're feeling bloated, but you can't do, you're just feeling very funny. So the um, uh, intake of fibers help to allow bowel movement. It also keeps you feeling fuller for longer. So when you feel full, you don't necessarily um, have the urge to eat. So eating food that are rich in fiber could also help a mother that um, having a lot of cravings to feel full for long. So she doesn't just keep eating and eating and then gaining more weight than she should in pregnancy. Water. Water is life. <laughs> like I would say, um, the body is actually made of 70% water, according to um, research or science, and it is necessary for a whole lot of functions in the body. It helps to maintain your blood volume. It prevents constipation. It reduces the risk of urinary tract infection. It also helps to maintain your baby's amniotic fluid. So when you're, you're dehydrated, it reduces the amount of amniotic fluid that your baby could also have. And this could also cause some complications in your pregnancy. And it's advised that 
uh, mamas could take about eight to 12 glasses of water a day for optimum function. Now, moving on to a topic that some of us would not really like to hear, and that's food to avoid. So some major foods to avoid are caffeine and alcohol. Um, caffeine and alcohol have been seen to, to um, increase the risk of a miscarriage in pregnancy besides causing um, some other or being a risk factor to certain other conditions um, like hypertension um, in, in, in pregnancy, um, liver diseases, um, distorting certain metabolic functions that go on in the body. Um, alcohol could also call a condition, of course, a condition we call um, um, alcohol fetal syndrome, so fetal alcoholic syndrome, where um, if you're drunk or if you're already feeling tipsy, then you can imagine how drunk your baby would be in the womb because it actually has a way of seeping in through the placenta and getting to your baby. So it's not just going to be you taking the alcohol. Hey, it's just in my belly now. Your baby is also going to get a taste of it. And research has shown that no quantity of alcohol is actually safe in pregnancy. For caffeine, um, a mother is limited to at least one, one um, cup a day. I don't mean oversized cup because some persons have different definition of cup. And because I said one cup, you can go and carry the biggest cup in your house and you just say one cup of caffeine. You no, know? caffeine can also be gotten from soft drinks like Coke. Um, it can also be gotten from uh, your normal um, um, beverages. Even energy drinks also contain a lot of caffeine. So even though it helps to keep you alert, it could also put a lot of strain on the body and even increase the possibility of having a high blood pressure. So some other foods to be cautious of are what we call empty calorie foods. These are foods that have high energy content, but little nutritional value. Foods like burgers, fries, pizza, shawarma. Uh, if you're in the building that like things like this, you can show me in the comment section. Uh, yeah, these are foods that we would always love to eat, but the truth is in pregnancy, we are going for quality foods. And so these are not, it doesn't mean that you won't have to eat any of these, but it shouldn't form your major diet. It should just be something that happens once in a while. Oh, let me just treat myself a little. Come on, we could go with the same, I beg, now belly I get, I know keepers, let me eat. Uh, yes, you can. But please be very cautious. It shouldn't form your major diet where it's something that you eat literally every day. It could be once in a while. And please, moderation is always key, like I would say. So some other foods to avoid are raw seafood, um, unpasteurized milk, like freshly uh, gotten milk from cows. And you feel, oh, it's fresh from the source. And so it's safe to eat. And then you just begin to go up on it, you know. Why? Because it contains a lot of bacteria and it's really not sterile. Unpasteurized pasteurized milk is, is actually one I say because this milk, when gotten, it is boiled to a certain degree and then cooled. So that boiling helps to kill possible germs and contaminations in that milk. Also, undercooked eggs. Oh, I don't have the patience to boil this egg. I want to eat now, now, and I cannot eat this food without anything on top. And so the egg is just have don't go beg, let me eat it like that. Please make sure that your eggs are properly um, cooked, where the yolk is firm, then you're sure that this egg is properly cooked because it could contain what we call salmonella and it could cause um, food poisoning. Um, also, um, it, eating raw vegetables. So vegetables should be properly washed and properly cooked before it is eaten. Also foods like uh, hot dog or sausages. I love sausages, but then you just um, get them from the path or oh, because of a lot of sausages, you don't fry them or even cook them and you just begin to munch on them. It's not advice, it's not healthy at all. So lastly, we'll be talking about food meat. So these are certain beliefs that persons have about food that are actually not correct. Um, you could comment in the um, make some comments and comments in the comment section about certain food meats that you've heard. Uh, I don't know. I don't know a lot of food meats uh, as it were, but there's so many that we could have heard from our various places. Uh, we could actually get to know today and know that these things are not true. So some of them I have here is 
uh, if I eat eggs, my baby will be a thief later in life. It's ridiculous, but a lot of people actually believe this. It even said that if I eat snail, my baby could be slow, just probably because of the characteristics of snail. And then it's attributed that if I eat a food like that, it could also um, affect my baby. But that's not true. Eggs and snail are highly nutritious in proteins, in vitamins, in minerals. So not eating these things deprive you of getting these essential nutrients that can be gotten from this lovely um, sources of um, nutrients and um, also it could be said that uh, now that you're pregnant you are eating for two that's not true your baby is a, literally a tiny human you are the major one that's eating <laughs> your baby is just getting um, little from your blood supply that the nutrients that your body has digested and entered into your blood so you really don't need to eat for two as it were like you're eating for two full human beings and so when you serve a portion your rice is as tall as Mount Everest. No, you don't need that. Like I said before, you only need about 300 to 500 extra calories. So you can get ex the extra things that you need from just eating um, um, side dishes like salads or fruits or um, and healthy sandwiches. That could give you all of the um, um, extra nutrients that you need. Also, prenatal vitamins are all you need in pregnancy. Um, also not true. Prenatal vitamins are only a supplement, supplement in capital letters and in code. You get your major the, um, nutrients from your food. But just in case the food does not contain the recommended daily allowance for um, these nutrients, that is where your prenatal vitamins that are already formulated to come in, the, the actual proportion of um, nutrients come in handy to, to uh, make sure that you get the optimum nutrition that you're supposed to get daily for you and your baby. Um, lastly, pregnant women only crave foods that their body needs. That's also not true. Um, yes, you could be craving some kinds of food, but there are some times where women crave non-nutritional substances. You can hear some cravings. They feel like chewing paper, just like the smell of it. Um, there's one thing they eat in Nigeria, and I know of. They call it unzu. It, it looks like a chalk. I know many many women also chew that, and it really doesn't have any nutritional content. So, saying you're craving, you eat that, you know, you're just eating it doesn't mean that your body needs it. That's why you are eating it. But it's just your hormone just doing a, 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 um, a something to you and making you probably feel like eating that. So it doesn't necessarily mean that that's what your body needs at that time. So in conclusion, you can see from everything that I've said that nutrition in pregnancy cannot be overemphasized. Uh, it's important that as much as possible, a mother maintains a healthy diet. If you're one who really doesn't enjoy eating or one who eats a lot, um, you have to understand that there's a, actually um, um, your nutrition affects your baby and so you have to pay more attention to it. For those who are actually having struggling with, with having good appetite, um, I understand. And sometimes it's not easy to always just eat and eat. But you can have a plan with your doctor, your nutritionist, um, that could also help you to um, probably draft out things that could be beneficial for you and for mothers who have a lot of cravings you've seen that you really do need to cut down on certain things know that even though your body is really dragging to have it there are some things that are not necessary it helps to teach you some kind of self-control it's not easy it's just nine months <laughs> but i know it's not easy and that's why we have the Mimigo community where you can actually get to know that you are not in this alone there are so many other persons going through this and with experiences from these mothers, you could also know how to navigate through your journey. And it also gives you a sense of comfort and um, um, helps you in your pregnancy journey as well. So thank you so much, everybody, for listening. I hope we enjoyed my session. Um, if you have questions, you can add, drop it in the comment section. And we'll see you later in the question and answer session. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Wow, thank you so much, Nathalie. Like I was just nodding my head and trying to just jot things down because you 
spoke on a lot. Please remember that a healthy diet equals to a healthy mom and a healthy baby in the long run. Like she rightfully said, it's just nine months and you can try to give up on all those sweet things, right? For you to just be healthy for your baby. So Blessing, thank you so much. You have a lot, a lot of questions. And like she said, we will get it at the end of this session. So I'll be bringing in Dr. Daniel now. I hope you're ready for us. Um, Dr. Daniel Adegulu is a resident of obstetrician and gynecologist at the Federal Medical Center at Sabah Delta State. He has vast experience dealing and treating female reproductive conditions and cares for pregnant women during and after childbirth. He has carried out successful childbirth deliveries and performed major surgeries that have meaningfully contributed to his success so far in his career. Dr. Daniel is one of our major gynecologists at Pred Class, and he is driven towards women and maternal health care and has been a significant stakeholder in the Nigerian healthcare system with regards to women's health. Are we ready to listen to this power packs presentation? Because he's going to be talking about pregnancy trimesters and what to expect, understanding miscarriage and lowering the risk of miscarriage in pregnancy. Please listen through, sit back, relax, have your pen and paper handy to just get all the information you need from this session. Um, Dr. Daniel, you have the floor now. I hope you're ready ready to take yes, on I this am. session. All right, thank you. You have the floor. Let me just um, uns unshare the last screen so that I can share, please. Okay. Um... Nurse Blessing, please, you can stop sharing your screen for Dr. Daniel to come through. Thank you. Yes, I think you have the floor now. Okay, thank you everyone for coming along. Um, we'll be talking on um, a very important topic. I don't know if you can see my screen. We're gonna share right now. Good, so pregnancy trimesters and what to expect in pregnancy. My name. Um, what are we going to be discussing this evening? Um, things to discuss. We'll talk about pregnancy changes, the changes that occur inside you, um, hospital checks, and um, we'll talk about conclusion. Well, before we start talking about these, I want to ask you a question. What do you think are the changes a woman would have when she is pregnant? Now, these changes, do they occur to all women to the same degree? Well, we'll discuss that along. As a form of introduction, pregnancy results from um, the fertilization of a mature ovum from the woman by a viable spermatozoom from the man. And the woman's body undergoes several changes, um, and all of these are aimed at adapting the woman to the new life that is being formed in her. These changes are normal. So every pregnant woman will undergo um, some form of changes in pregnancy. So it's gonna affect your anatomy, your physiology, your psychology, your blood system and everything around you. Now we're talking about this because the basic knowledge of the changes that happen in pregnancy is critical. Virtually every organ, every system undergoes um, some form of alteration during pregnancy. Well, from the picture, you will see that from the brain, psychological changes, the blood, the heart, you know, there's increase in blood volume, blood mass, the liver, the gallbladder, the renal system, every part of the woman's body changes because there's a, this need for adaptation to a new life growing in her. I will try to spare us um, the stress of medical jargon so that we could flow together um, with this. Now, what you may often hear in the hospital will include last menstrual period. Now it's worthy of note here that the last menstrual period is um, the first day of the last menses you saw before 
I mean, the last message you saw, people usually have a mistake with it and try to make it, see? try to make it look as if um, is the next menses, is the next menses that like the menses you missed. No, the last menses you saw, Jesus. Well, can well the the last menstrual period, your expected date of delivery and your estimated gestational age are all um, things you expected to know. Sorry for the distraction. Last menstrual period was the first day of your last menses, from which we'll calculate your expected date of delivery and expected uh, gestational age. Now, um, we have your expected gestational age could be in days, in weeks, and in months. However, we try to use um, um, weeks as doctors, we use weeks. So you can actually Google some apps online that will help you show um, how many weeks you are gone. It's easy, just go online, put your last menstrual period, and you get virtually everything you need to get. Now, the World Health Organization defines normal birth as that that occurs spontaneously in onset on its own, um, has low risk at the beginning of labor and continues to be low risk till delivery and happening with the baby coming with the head at 10, maybe 37 weeks to 42 weeks without too much intervention by the doctors or the health um, practitioners. Now, that's a picture um, showing um, a woman giving birth, pushing, we usually say she pushes. So pregnancy is divided into stages, the first trimester, the second trimester, and the third trimester. And then these are affected by hormones, the human hormone, the woman's hormone, which are basically estrogen and progesterone. Just know that every birth is a miracle. What are the changes we expect in pregnancy? Well, the diagram here shows us some of the, um, the changes we'll see. There will be hormonal fluctuations, which can even cause um, changes in your mood. Enhanced smell, the taste buds may change. There may be food aversion or food fads or cravings, nausea, vomiting, water retention, weight gain, and et cetera. Now, in the first trimester where you have from the first week to the, about the 12th week, the first symptom a woman sees is um, amenorrhea, which is the loss of menses, completely no more menses. And then you wonder what happened? That's the first symptom. Now, other changes could occur, which include changes in the breasts. The woman breast begins to get fuller, firmer, bigger, throbbing, um, tender, a little painful, and the areola, the dark part of the breast begins to get really darker around the nipple. Nausea and vomiting is a usual and nearly a constant in all pregnant women. And it could be mild, it could be um, severe, but then the mild ones and happening in the morning is said to be nearly normal. You know, we could say in those days when a woman is trying to hide her pregnancy, the only way our mothers would know is when you wake up in the morning and just rush to the bedroom to, uh, to puke. So, oh, madam, it's like you're pregnant. Well, other symptoms could include increased in urination, morning, afternoon, and even at night, you wake up to urinate more often. It can cause anxiety, irritability. I want to talk about anxiety and irritability, especially to the men who are listening, because um, your wife may suddenly become irritable. She gets angry for what she used to be happy with. She's happy with what she used to be angry with. Please, it's pregnancy, and it happens especially at the first trimester. Well, in the end of this, as a woman, you may begin to feel a tall, a little rising down, down in your abdomen. Now, what may be happening inside you? One, the baby begins to grow from the small size that it is, about the pin's head size, to about seven centimeters, you know, let's say about three finger breadth. All the organs are formed in the first trimester. They may not be well developed, but they are all formed. The limbs, the hands, everything comes up. The breast, sorry, the heart beat 
start during this period and the baby begins to breathe. It is expected that um, at this first trimester, you have a hospital check, which means you are expected to have done an antenatal registration in the hospital. We like women who come in at the first trimester, eight weeks, good. A pregnancy test to be done, which will obviously be, be positive. We want to do an ultrasound scan. And this is important, especially for women who do not know their last menstrual period. If you take the, an ultrasound scan in the first trimester, maybe 10 to 12 weeks, thereabouts, it can give us an accurate or at least close to an accurate dating of your the baby's gestational age. We take blood samples for tests. We do um, some examination. The doctor will obviously examine you. And it is important to know that at this point, we want to do what we call risk assessment. This pregnancy, is it going to flow normally? Are you hypertensive before pregnancy? Are you hypertensive now? Are there other comorbidities that we need to look at? And then the vitamins will actually be started. Now, in the second trimester, from the about 13th week to 28 weeks, the baby begins to kick. It happens in the first time moms at about 20 weeks. But for those who have had experience and are giving birth before, it happens um, about 18 weeks. It's called quickening. The baby moves. Now, a good point is that the urinary frequency would reduce. So you may need it, really need to rest. I mean, there won't be too much need to wake up at night to urinate. Now the baby begins to grow. You are obviously pregnant. You would know and you will feel and you will see. Um, the nausea, the vomiting, the early morning sicknesses may at this time disappear completely. The baby grows big, it kicks and all of that. However, in the second trimester, there may be increased tiredness. Um, you may want to sleep longer and then there'll be weight gain, back pain, and then stretch marks may appear. And then a long line in your abdomen will just be there, linear nigra. It is important to know that inside, the baby is also growing, hence the peak and the enlarging um, abdomen. The head is bigger at this time. The fetus is more active. It looks more like a human being. And at the end of 24, 26 weeks, the baby is about uh, close to one kg. It is expected that you continue antenatal visits. And um, in antenatal visits, there will be screenings done. We continue to screen our women because these normal changes may be exaggerated in some people. The normal changes may be exaggerated in people who have background medical illnesses. For example, someone who is a, sick, um, a sickle cell disease patient may have aggravated symptoms in pregnancy. So we check all of this and continue our vitamins. Please note that the doctors would want to give you a treatment, a drug for prevention for malaria. In our environment where malaria is endemic, we start such at the second trimester. Now in the third trimester, well, it's good to know at this point, you know you're pregnant, your husband knows you're pregnant, everyone knows you are pregnant. The womb is obviously larger, you gain more weight, there's facial puffiness, and other symptoms like um, indigestion, heart burns, constipation, hemorrhoids may come in. Um, I want to say that at this point, the woman is most beautiful. You know, the nose is big, the lips are fat, and everywhere is big very beautiful and God has made it so to be so beautiful. You may begin to feel fetal kicks, the, I mean um, contractions, the baby, the womb trying to contract usually is not painful. All of these are preparations to delivery, preparation to giving birth. And then as we say growth inside, the organs are getting mature, um, look more, very more like a human being, the head and the body size are the same. If the baby comes out at this time, even at 28 weeks, 29 weeks, we can salvage it and he or she will survive. So antenatal clinics must continue hospital checks. We continue our malaria treatment and prevention. Um, ultrasound scan is done. We do anatomy scan to see if there's any birth defect and any correction we can do at this time. Now, please note that during the third trimester, your doctor or your health giver would want to discuss with you how you will give birth, which we call birth preparedness. And the next speaker will be talking about preparation, labor, and all of that. But then you need to know, is this baby going to come via a vaginal delivery? Is it going to be a cesarean section? Do I have twins? What are my options? I'm diabetic, I'm hypertensive. These are discussed during the third trimester on the deliveries and how to go. Have I had a previous cesarean session? I want to say here that um, a woman who gives birth through the vagina, I don't want to use the say normal delivery, who gives birth through the vagina is 
as good as someone who gives birth through a CS. It doesn't make you superior or makes anyone inferior. What we are aiming at is a live baby, a live mother, and everybody is happy. And we aim at having delivery at term. Now, in conclusion of this, because we have two uh, discussions to go up, um, pregnancy and delivery are normal God-given rewards to propagate human existence. The changes in pregnancy are normal, and adaptation for new life is why this is happening. All organs, all systems are affected, just like we have said, so it's good to expect these changes. Um, these changes can be exaggerated if there are pre-existing health conditions. Knowledge, as I say always, is key. So it's good to know all of this and know that these things would happen. The knowledge of them happening helps you to relax. And we talk to our husbands um, to help us when we are this pregnant, when we have this complaint, sometimes we need an extra massage, an extra touch and all of that. Please, this support will go a long way to help our women. Um, this will be the conclusion for this. However, pregnancy, may not go as expected. Hence, we're going to be talking about miscarriages and we're talking about understanding. Just let's know about miscarriage. Nobody prays for it. And whenever it happens, it's a trauma to the mother, psychologically, to the family and everyone. Um, so what is miscarriage? It's said to be the expulsion or extraction from the mother of an embryo or a fetus weighing about 500 grams or less, and is not capable of surviving outside. Um, this happens about 22 weeks, and um, the term miscarriage is what we want to use. It actually means abortion or spontaneous abortion, but for acceptance, miscarriage is what we use now. So it happens, um, it can happen to anybody. In our environment, we use 28 weeks. So any pregnancy less than 28 weeks, that spontaneously miscarries or comes up is said to be what a miscarriage. And it happens for about five to 15% of all pregnancies. What are the varieties and uh, the causes of um, miscarriage? Um, miscarriage could be isolated or recurrent. Isolated would mean it happens maybe just once. Recurrent would mean it happened two or three or four times concurrently. In any of these, it could either be threatened, it could be inevitable, incomplete, complete, missed, septic. Now, when it's threatened, the baby is still alive in the womb. There are symptoms of miscarriage, which we'll talk about. But when we examine in the hospital, the womb, the cervix, internal, is closed. Such people will tell them to have a bed rest, we may give some supportive management, and well, some of those survive till um, term. Inevitable will mean that this cervix is open and there's nothing we really can do. The baby is not alive and it comes out. Incomplete, some part of the baby is out and so on. Now, in the first trimester, what can cause miscarriages? What you have noted is that 80% of all miscarriages happen in the first trimester. Genetic or chromosomal um, defects in the baby accounts for a large um, amount of babies that are miscarried in the first trimester. Chromosomal abnormalities, um, I wouldn't want to give us some jargons, but then the genes are not well connected, they're not fixed well, some are excess, some are reduced, some are haploid, some are diploid, some are just like that. The baby cannot survive extra uterine life. Hence nature, let me use the word nature, takes care of it and it is, um, miscarriage in the first trimester. Other causes of um, pregnancy losses in the first trimester will include endocrine or metabolic um, issues, progesterone deficiency, thyroid um, gland diseases, either hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism, poorly controlled diabetes mellitus, hypertension, and all of that can be a cause of first trimester miscarriages. Infections. Note that at the, um, the first speaker talked about bacterial that can cross from the mother to the baby and affect the baby and cause what? Infection. And I talked about malaria, parasitic infections, including plasmodium. Uh, malaria infection can cause miscarriages. So we're careful um, in treating and preventing this. What you of note here is that um, some women have a syndrome called antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. And it's usually a 
common cause of um, recurrent pregnancy losses. For women who have had pregnancy losses once, twice, three times, please note that you need to do some further investigation in the hospital to check if such is, um, is in you. Um, these are some chromosomal abnormalities, just like I said, infections, congenital birth defects. I want to talk about this because in the second trimester, cervical insufficiency is a major cause of miscarriages, meaning the womb is unable to carry pregnancy till term. So it is lost, especially during the second trimester. Accidents, trauma can cause it. And just like the first speaker said, avoid use of alcohol and unnecessary use of drugs. Um, in the second trimester, just like I said, abnormalities in um, the womb, there's some congenital malformation of the womb, septate, I mean, there in the womb, fibroids can be a cause of miscarriage. Now, chronic illnesses in the mother, like hypertension, diabetes can cause miscarriages. Hence, we talk about screening, screening, management, treatment, infection, as we have said above, use of drugs. And worthy of note is that many of the miscarriages that happen in first trimester and second trimester are un unexplained. No matter how we try to know, we may not know what may have caused it. So how would you know, how would someone know that, okay, I think this is a miscarriage coming up. Back pain, a persistent back pain. We know that back pain can be a symptom of pregnancy, but when it becomes persistent and you're feeling pressure, it could be a symptom. The morning sickness, which is nausea, vomiting in the morning, inexplicably disappears. Suddenly, all the pregnancy symptoms begin to disappear. The breast goes down, you don't vomit again. Check it, it may be a sign of a lost pregnancy. If a woman begins to pass out tissues from the vagina for any reason, please watch it out. It may be what? A sign of miscarriage. Spotting, bleeding per vagina, and then, you know, blood from the vagina. Just like I said, bleeding, it may be mild, maybe bright red, brownish, any form of bleeding should be taken seriously in pregnancy. Some women say um, when they are pregnant, they keep seeing their period till they give birth. Please, if you're pregnant and you see blood, run to the hospital. Other symptoms, as I said, lower abdominal pain, it may be absent, it may be there. Now, how do we manage this? Every bleeding should be taken seriously and as an emergency. Please don't manage at home rush to a hospital where you could be treated. If it's threatened, we could manage it. If it's um, inevitable, then we would help to do a form of evacuation and all of that um, and give supportive care. If it's something that is treatable and manageable, we will do that. As a form of prevention, as we round up, um, knowledge is key. I keep saying this. So when you know this, there are things you can use, you can prevent. Pre-conception care, before you become pregnant, know yourself. There's nothing wrong in knowing yourself. Go to the hospital with your husband. Check your blood pressure. Check your sugar level. Do investigations like your blood group, resource iso immunization, and all of that. If you've had issues with um, cervical incompetence or insufficiency, a cervical circlage can be put to tie the womb and help carry the pregnancy to term. And then we may give some medications even um, early to prevent miscarriages. Well, keynotes, things to remember. Wash your hands, avoid infections. We are in the hand washing week, that was last week. Make sure you wash your hands after using toilet, before eating, after touching things, um, avoid smoking, quit it. Alcohol, quit. And take precautions against foodborne diseases, as said earlier. Maintain good, healthy weight. Eat good nutrition, as said. Do some exercise. Ensure you are in your hospital when you are asked to be. If there are chronic illnesses, we'll treat them. And then have safe, safe sex during pregnancy. Now, um, I want to share this because many women have passed through miscarriages and are not able to come back to their normal life. Please give yourself time and space to grieve. Seek support. We are here to support you. As a platform here to support you, we will support you. Let's go off personal blame. The baby you miscarried was not your fault. There's a tendency for the village people to say, it's your fault, you kill the baby, you kill the baby. Let's go, it's not your fault. If there are things that we could change, we will change them. Consume good food, take your supplements, take good water, rest at home, you know, do your exercises, just your regular exercises. Do things that make you feel good. In conclusion, uh, miscarriage is an undesired 
painful and psychologically demoralizing event. It is fairly common, but rarely recurrent. Knowledge of um, the risk factors and the causes is key. We'll try to limit the things we can limit so that we can prevent this menace. Thank you very much for listening. Paul, oh, thank you so much, Dr. Daniel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This was an amazing presentation. You touched some sensitive parts, and I'm just grateful that you shed some light on it and gave us hope in the end. Thank you so much. We would get, we've been receiving lots and lots and lots of questions. I hope you'll not get tired of answering them. We'll get to it at the end of this presentation. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So um, before I go on to the next um, presenter, I would like to say a big thank you to our lovely and amazing audience. Like the comment section on has been interactive and I, I just hope that you are taking notes on everything that has been said and then you are addressing your questions. Just leave them on the chat box. We would get to it at the end of this master class. So I would like to know Moisa Kengde Hamed. She will be taking us on prepping your body for labor and birth. Nurse Moisa is a registered nurse with qualifications as a midwife and a public health nurse. She backed a bachelor's of nursing from Ladoke Akintola University of Technology. She is passionate about maternal and women's health care and takes special interest in pregnant women, children, and other adults. Nurse Muizat is one of our midwives at Fred Class Baby. And has practiced with private and public working ID to receive and learn from Nos Muiza. Nos Muiza, you have the floor. Hello, Nos Muiza. We're ready to receive you, to learn from you. I'm sure you are ready for us. Hi, everyone. Hello, Dr. Dan. Okay, can you hear? Okay, yeah, yeah. Big. You're live now. Thank you so much for joining in. Please, when you're ready, you can share your screen and continue. Thank you. Okay, so um, hi everyone. It is finally, uh, it is good to be finally here. Um, over the time while I've practiced as a midwife, I've had several of my patients talk to me about them dreading the, um, the labor and delivery aspect of pregnancy. And this they attach, so they, they attach this feeling to the pain that is associated to this um, period. And of course, this, this um, feeling is quite understandable, but then I feel with the right um, information, um, the right knowledge about pain management, this feeling could be well addressed. Um, so this presentation would be um, talking, we'll be dwelling into what labor is, um, we'll be briefly talking about the, the, um, the options of birth, birth plan, and we'll be focusing on the pain management during labor. But before we go into it, I would like to ask everyone, how early do you think it's too early to prepare for pregnancy? Well, I would be, um, you can drop your comments into the chat box and um, then we would dive into the presentation. So um, first of all, what is labor? Labor is um, a, a series of events that occurs, which eventually leads to the delivery. I mean, uh, which eventually leads to the expulsion of the 
content of the womb. And by the content of the womb, I mean the, the, fetal, the, the fetus, which is the baby, the placenta, and the retained product of the womb. And these events include the onset of regular and um, painful contraction, which is quite different from the Braxton X contraction that is common and most pregnant women um, most pregnant women experience it during the pregnancy. Then there's the progressive effacement and dilatation of the cervix. This basically means that the cervix um, gradually thins out and um, expands, um, expands or dilates to allow the but to allow the delivery of the baby. Then there's the descent of the presented part of the fetus, which could be the head, the face, the, the, the buttock, the, or, the, or the limbs. And then um, the labor process hence with the expulsion of the fetus and the placenta. Um, so how exactly do I know that I am in labor? There are signs that shows that FCU know or feel that you are in labor. The first one is the is the show. This is the mucosa plug that blocks the cervical um the, the, the cervical canal and open it up and prepare um, open it up and prepare it for further dilatation. Then there's the rupture of membrane which can be um which is the leaking of fluid from the from the amniotic um the, the um, um, amniotic sac and this amniotic sac is is um it's like it, it's a sac where the baby swims it contains a fluid where the baby swims then we have the painful and regular uterine contraction this is the most definitive um the, the most definitive sign that makes you that sort of confirms that you are in labor and it should occur at least one every 10 minutes, at least when the um, labor is just starting. So what do I need to know about a birth plan? Dr. Daniel mentioned that uh, it is very necessary that towards the end of your pregnancy, you should have had a, um, a, 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 you should have made a decision on how you choose to bring out your little one. And this could be in form of a vaginal delivery or a cesarean section. Now, before you choose this birth plan, it, is, it should be um, what, uh, it is quite important that you note that what is mostly important in, um, what is mostly important is that you are able to, is that eventually you have a healthy baby and a healthy you at the end of the, delivery and so nothing should cloud your deci your decision forget about what people think about cesarean se section or vaginal delivery so this vaginal delivery is mainly when the mother decides to um choose to push out a baby through um the vaginal canal this requires lots of maternal efforts and then there is a cesarean section which could be the ele elective or the emergency elective means right from when you're pregnant you've chosen that you're going for a cesarean section and often um mothers would choose mothers would choose vaginal delivery my hand up with a, an emergency cesarean section because um there might be complications during the course of pregnancy or even at um, during the labor. So this, this um, complications could necessitate the need for an emergency um, cesarean section. Then um, as we've talked about the choice, would I would like to mention the pain management for both of these um, the pain management uh, options for both of these um, birth plan. So for the vaginal delivery, a mother could either could choose to go through the process without any analgesic, that is without any form of um, pain medication, or decide to go on um, the epidural or the opiate drugs. This suppresses the pain and makes you go through a labor basically without um, pain. Then there is the hydrotherapy that helps suppresses the pressure, I mean, the, 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 the pain during labor as well. And this is when the, the mother labors inside the bathtub full of warm, um, warm water and it's been 
really monitored by uh, professionals, by midwives. Then um, for the pain management for cesarean section, for um, while undergoing the cesarean section, before you undergo a cesarean section, there will be anesthetic options. And this could be the um, in form of a spinal or epidural. So after the delivery, after the delivery, after at the end of the cesarean section, the spinal or epidural effects will still be there. And this goes on for like 30 to one hour after delivery. This at, the, at that moment, you are really numb of the pain. You are not feeling any pain whatsoever. But once this effect wears house, there will be a need for a combination of analgesic, which is the um, a combination of NSAIDs and opiates that would help you manage um, through the post-delivery moments, that will help you go through the post-delivery moment without pain. So um, another question that keeps popping out during our clinics, um, the clinics I've been having with my um, with pregnant women is what ex uh, what to expect in a labor room, and this comes up from um, first time mothers mostly. This um, in 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 so in in the labor room, what you expect mostly is lots of monitoring. What basically happen is monitoring. So there will be lots of checks, checks and checks, and this is in form of the vital signs. The, the midwife wants to know your blood pressure, your um, respiratory rate, your temperature, your um, then the fetal heart rate. And then there will be um, checks, there will be timely checks for the dilatation. We want to know how, if, if your um, cervix is progressively dilating, then there will be um, the monitoring of the contractions and um, the, the frequency and the strength of the contractions. Now, all this monitoring is basically to be able to identify any deviation from um, any deviation from normal while the process is going on. So, and um, there is also the likelihood for most times the uh, the first time mothers to undergo episiotomy. This is a cut that is made in the um, vaginal canal around the vaginal canal to um, that helps to expand the canal and makes it easier for the baby to come out. This could be necessary if the, um, the, the, um, if, if the presenting part, the size of the, uh, the size of the presenting part is quite bigger compared to the birth canal of the mother. Then there will be lots of bladder and OM, bowel opening. And this is as a result, this is because, um, uh, this is because there is pressure on these organs and the, the capacity is reduced. So you feel the urge to constantly urinate and towards the end of the um, of labor, you would you may you would most likely uh, need to open your bowel. Now, preparing for labor. I, I asked earlier, I asked how early do you think is too early to prepare for labor. Sincerely, it is never too early to prepare for labor. And once, um, once you've confirmed that you're pregnant, it is the right time to start um, preparing for labor. So the things you need to prepare for labor are, are what I'll be mentioning now. So the first thing is rest and relaxation. As a pregnant woman, you really need to rest you need you need to find time to rest you you should adjust your schedule so that you have enough time for rest and relaxation and then your nutrient i mean your nutrition you have to up your game when it comes to the nutrition um nurse blessing has said a lot about this so i won't be dwelling too much on this but your nutrition and enough fluids is quite important in preparation for labor because you you want to be as healthy as possible and have the um, necessary energy and necessary strength to go through labor when it comes. Then a daily exercise, um, a daily exercise regimen can be incorporated in your routine. It doesn't really necessarily have to be um, a, a strenuous exercise. Mere walking could um, is could um, mere walking could help. Then there is for um, um, to focus on the 
labor aspect, the perineal massage and the pelvic exercises are quite important. If it's something you think you can do, the perineal massage is just is you trying to use your thumb, either one or one or two thumbs to stretch, I mean, to stretch the vaginal canal and make it quite um, elastic enough so that when the baby is trying to push, you don't end up with a um, with a tear and which could actually lead to some other uh, unforeseen contingencies. Then um, the, the pelvic exercise is also quite important as it has been illustrated in this picture. Pelvic exercises helps you massage your pelvic area and makes um, helps, uh, and prepare the, pel helps prepare the pelvic for uh, the pelvic area for delivery. Then the, another most important preparation for labor is being compliant with your antenatal appointment. I can't overemphasize this. You really need to not miss your antenatal appointment. This is because lots would be taught, you'll be taught lots of things during antenatal appointment. Your, you, would be, your, your, you and your baby would be monitored. And if there is any need for um, extra interventions, this is when it's most likely, um, this is when the decision is most likely made. So do not miss your antenatal appointment. So um, for pain management during labor, there are quite um, the, um, a lot of techniques that you can incorporate during the labor. The first one is the counter pressure. This, is, um, this can be done by um, your birth partner or your, your midwife. It's just applying every, every pressure on painful areas of the lower back. The, during labor, the part that is really affected is the, 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 the lower back mostly and the, the um, lower part of the abdomen. So this part, you, you, you don't want to apply pressure on the lower part of the abdomen, but you focus on the uh, lower back. So a fist can be made that's to, to, that would, a fist can be made with to, uh, and applied. Um, a fist can be made to apply pressure on the lower back in form of a massage. This helps you to counter if counter the effects of the pain at that moment. Then the tightening of the eyes, the face, and the jaw. This is something most um, pregnant women, most pregnant women do unconsciously. You, you're, you're trying to tighten your eyes and tighten your face as um, thinking with the feeling that while you're doing that, the, you are releasing the tension. It actually works. At least at that moment, you you kind of feel a bit relieved because the, prey, the, the pain is not going into, it's, it's not, um, you are not literally feeling that pain, but you're, you're, you're trying to release that tension into something else then there is um the mental relaxation aspect um you can think of a relaxing scene um beautiful moments that would and that could happen after you have your 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 little one you can think of the friends that would come and visit you and your other plans like the the naming ceremony and all those things this could be a form of mental relaxation for you, and it could serve as a means to divert your, your thoughts from the pain you're undergoing at that time. And of course, the positive affirmations, this really do help too. It encourages you and motivates you to keep going while you are, um, while you are in labor. You can keep telling yourself, you can do this. The midwives will always tell you this. It's a form of supporting you. Tell you that you really can do this. It's, it's just a norm that you have to go through, and very soon you have your little one with you. Then another uh, means of me, um, of managing pain during labor is the movement and positioning, and this includes you. You are encouraged to keep on moving, but rest at intervals. You can't keep on moving throughout, else you would um, um, you would get sapped of your energy, then you assume, try as much as possible to assume upright position. It's good for um, to, to ensure that you are getting enough oxygen and your baby's getting enough oxygen as well. Then your all fours position when you have your palms on the, on the floor or on the, on the floor and you have your knees on the floor too. It's, it's quite up with the, 
pain, uh, the pelvic and the back pain. Then the birthing ball, you if your hospital have that uh, have that provision, you can try as much as possible to rock the to sit on the pelvic ball and try rocking around. It helps relieve the pain around the pelvic area. Then the supported standing and squatting. This helps relieve the tension around the pelvic area as well. Then the the deep breathing, the deep breathing um, techniques. This would have been taught during the antenatal clinics, and it is one technique that I know that that really really works. And this is when you breathe through your mouth during the contraction. You try and open your mouth as much as possible and breathe through through the mouth instead of the nose. Then when the contractions are off, you want to breathe, um, you want to breathe normally. And then um, the last part of the pain management is the diversional therapy. And this includes listening to movies the, um, or sounds, music, if you're a lover of one, and um, you should probably want to discuss with your birth partner. But I would be sincere that this diversional therapy can only be effective or it's actually easier during the, um, the passive phase of the, uh, the passive phase of labor. During the active phase, you don't even have that that you, you you don't even have that energy or that thought of holding phones to start listening to movies. But it's it's one um, form of pain management during the active while you're still like one to three or four centimeter um, dilated. Then the last one, the second to the last one actually is you would want to refer your energy. All this repositioning and the movement around would sap you of your energy so try as much as possible to hydrate yourself properly then listen to your midwives these are people who have been with you throughout the pro um throughout the um the process of getting pregnant and to throughout the pregnancy journey so you would want to listen to them because of course they know you very well they know the the kind of movement or repositioning that you would not benefit you or that could become that could serve as a danger to you and um i i really do hope that exploring all these all these um um pain management techniques would help you ease your way through the labor and delivery so now that the the baby is here what's what what is next um after once the baby is here you, I know we, we kind of have, we kind of have, we mostly have lots of things we want to do. I want to call this, I want to tell her this, I want someone to bring the mini this and all that. Calm down, mothers, you need to rest as much as possible. Rest and rest and allow time for yourself to heal. You need that moment to heal. You need that moment to rest and bond very well with your child. You need that moment to to transform back into your pre-pregnancy state. Then you have to be compliant with your medication. This is quite important too. You would most likely be given antibiotics, which is to prevent the occurrence of infection or if there is a one while the process of um, during the process of delivery, in whichever method. Um, the antibiotics takes care, takes care of the infections and helps you heal. Then um, you'll be you be given anti, um, analgesics to help you uh, manage the pain after delivery. And depending on your um, hemoglobin level, which is a blood level, literally, you would you may be given hematinix to compensate for the loss of blood during the pregnancy during the um, delivery then the pelvic exercise is quite important too this helps your um this helps to combat the effects of the relaxing that have the relaxing hormone that have um made the pelvic area quite uh, um tender so it helps you the the pelvic area go back into the pre i mean into the pre-pregnancy state then you want to incorporate the seat bath too so this seat bath is a form of sitting on the uh, on a bowl full of warm water and you can inside the warm water you can add either epsom salt or some people prefer um, natural herbs like um the ginger roots the lavender the eucalyptus leaf and some other ones 
to and this this seed bath is basically to, um basically helps to um heal heal the pelvic area as well um i so that is that about the presentation i really wish you all um, a safe and each free pregnancy and delivery always thank you for listening Thank you so much, Nos Mizat. I'm sure we have gotten a lot from your presentation. Thank you, thank you so much. We would attend to we would attend to the questions very soon. But um, please, in the comment section or in the chat box, kindly go through it. You think thank you for so and and an inquiry form, please write to know more about you. Would but if we have a question, please, 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 please join the W community to get access. We will be going into the Q and A section, and um, please, my speakers, my experts, I hope you guys are ready because these people are out for you. <laughs> we told them to ask questions, and they did a lot. So please get ready. I think I would like to start with um, our first speaker, Nos Blessing. Um, Nos Blessing, hi. Good evening. Are you ready for us? Hi, uh, yes. Are you ready? Yeah. These people are out for you. <laughs> you know, nutrition in pregnancy is something that we cannot really escape from. A lot of people have a lot of questions, like the meats you shared, there are a lot. Um, I wish I learned all this while I was pregnant. It would have probably been a better journey for me. So thank you, W Initiative and Baby Migo for bringing this up. So I would start with, Nos blessing. Are you ready? Yes, yes, I am. Okay, okay. So the first question, I would, uh, we have a lot of questions, but because of time, I wouldn't be able to share everything. So that's why we are encouraging the audience to get to join the prep class so that they can get access to you. So um, one question that has been recurring is, can you recommend specific food safe to consume during pregnancy? that will help providing like the macronutrients and the micronutrients that you um, you listed out. Can you recommend food that um, is going to be safe throughout pregnancy for this? Okay, yes, I can. So um, basically we have vegetables all around us. We have fruits literally everywhere. So you can get um, folic acids, iron, calcium, uh, vitamin A, B, C, D, E from vegetables and fruits. Um, we have them, ugu, beta leaf, water leaf. There are so many. You can get um, these um, essential nutrients also from nuts, from even poultry, from fish, from egg, oatmeal, uh, from red meat. You can get them from uh, dry fruits. Oils, you can actually eat actually in, in our everyday diet. We have it everywhere that you can eat. It's just that you now have to be more conscious of eating foods that um, fruits and vegetables to get maximum um, quality and um, quantity of these nutrients. Even tomatoes, um, various foods, apples, pineapples, watermelon, they're all over the place. So you can actually get these essential nutrients from these foods. And then if you're not sure if the quantity you are getting is also enough, that's where prenatal um, vitamin supplements also come in very handy. So it's almost kind of relieves you of the stress of thinking, did I have enough folic acid today? Did I have enough iron today? With prenatal vitamins that act as a supplement, they contain the recommended daily allowance for each type of nutrients um, in, in them. And so when you take the tablets um, every day, you know that you are actually having a backup plan to fall on in case your diet is really not meeting the 
recommended daily allowance that you have, but truly, these um, vitamins and minerals can be gotten from readily available foods around us, salads and the rest. So it's, it's actually very, very available. Oh, thank you. So that means just eat your regular foods, but like with portions and just control your diet. Yes. Um, you know, you said something about, you know, pregnant women, they say you have to eat for two or eat for three. Um, someone just asked, does multiple baby pregnancy mean eating more? Like, what would you, how would you tell a mom of twins to yes. eat or a mom of triplets? How would you um, describe that? Okay. So, um, like, like I mentioned earlier in the presentation, the calorie um, intake of mother increases during pregnancy. And like I said, she actually needs about 300 to 500 extra. So eating her normal diet, quantities that she can finish. Okay, sometimes she might have to portion it, um, probably eat um, several times a day to uh, meet her uh, uh, body weight demands per time. You feel hungry, you eat. When you're full, you stop. You don't have to say, well, because I'm carrying triplets, I'm carrying six children. And I don't think this um, place of food is enough to meet my babies, but your stomach is already full. But you feel because uh, you are carrying more than one child, then you now need to eat so much. You really do not need that. As long as you eat a healthy diet, okay? You take your supplements, you eat a healthy diet, that, and you feel full at the time, you take enough, uh, enough water, you're good to go until you can take um, snacks in between, in between meals, and then eat, just eat normal proportions that as long as you you don't have to be to feel so full, oh, I can no longer breathe. Then okay, yes, I'm eating food for all my children. No, maybe that's not really necessary. Just eat healthy, eat in moderation, and take your prenatal vitamins, and you're good. All right, thank you so much. Um, you mentioned something about eating healthy, a healthy um diet equals a healthy mom, a healthy baby. How about some? Um, people, some mothers, some women that have loss of appetite in pregnancy. How do you advise someone um, to, that's dealing with this? How do you advise someone dealing with loss of appetite in pregnancy? Okay, so this is where self-control comes in. It's not easy. Like I said, um, your hormones are really playing a fast one on you and your um, appetite or cravings could really be on the rooftop. And so you might really just be hungry for so many things. But in eating these things, you also check for portion control. You also check the quality of things that you're eating. I mentioned empty calorie foods that are high in energy, but really do not have any nutritional value. So if you check, okay, I eat, I eat a lot. I find I eat a lot, but what am I really eating so much? Am I eating foods that have these empty calories, more of um, um, uh, what's it called, fries and burgers and pizzas, which are actually empty calorie foods? Am I eating this thing more than I'm actually eating a normal healthy diet? So you actually have to be, um, be disciplined enough to streamline your diet. It will not always be easy. There are times where you say, it's feeling overwhelmed, but let me just eat. And it's okay. Okay, you don't have to, because you have to eat a healthy diet, you now feel so pressured that I can't eat anything. In fact, let this pregnancy be over and done with, I'm tired. No, it doesn't really have to get to that point of frustration. You just have to, um, because the truth is, if you can learn this thing for yourself, you can also be able to teach your children healthy diet and the importance. Even when they are craving for certain things that they shouldn't be eating, because you, you've been through it, you understand, you can even teach them better. So it has a way of actually helping you form good, healthy habits that even after pregnancy, because you've gone through it for the past nine months, it automatically becomes like a habit that where you begin to actually really watch what you eat to be sure that you're getting the nutrients that you need for general body health and um, immunity as well. So that'll be my advice. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So this is the last question for you for today. And I'm sure you'll get a lot more questions when this amazing audience joined the prayer class. So, um, you know, you spoke about the healthy weight that a pregnant woman has to gain healthy weight throughout the course of pregnancy. So this um, person asked, what is the right fetal weight at 30 weeks? 
what is the right fetal weight at 30 weeks? I don't know if you can answer that now or. Okay. Um, actually, a baby, when a baby is born at 10, the optimal weight is said to be between, should be rather between about 2.5 kg to 3.5 kg. Now there are scenarios where your baby might be smaller or bigger. So we cannot exactly say uh, in actual terms that at 30 weeks, your baby should be this weight because the truth is you are not in control of how much weight your baby actually has. The only way you can actually try to manage that is through your diet um, by reducing the amount of sugar intake, you um, sugar that your body actually gets from the food that you eat. Because it has been seen that um, consuming carbohydrates, first of all, is broken down to glucose. And when your body has so much glucose, more than necessary to work with, it could um, install some, but then it's not really able to get rid of so many others. It could increase your blood sugar, which could cause diabetes. And that is seen that women that have gestational diabetes also have higher chances of having overweight babies. So um, these are also many other factors beside your, your baby's genetics that could determine the weight of your baby. So it, it, it cannot be exactly specific that, oh, this must be the um, weight that your child should have, but you can know that your child actually is within normal uh, um, weight range, like I said, because the recommended birth weight um, after a baby is born is about 2.5, that's the minimum, to about 3.5 kg. So if you go for a scan and your baby's weight is below this range, heading towards this or in between this, you know your baby is fine. Well, if at 30 weeks, you already do your scan, your baby is already 3.5 and it doesn't even come out 30 weeks, you still have about um, eight to 10 weeks to go. And your baby is already 3.5 kg, you know that you are beginning to have an overweight baby and your doctor might possibly already be suggesting options um, besides vaginal birth because it could be traumatic. So it could be suggesting options like an elective cesarean section because your baby is big. So there's really no um, specific um, weight that your baby should have. And also it's not so much within your control to determine the weight of your baby at 30 weeks or at any gestational age. But your diet also can play a role in helping your baby to actually um, develop the way it should part-time so I don't I don't know if that answers your question well enough. yeah I, I think I think the answer if, if she would join pre class so stay tuned yeah. for more questions thank you so much this may be the last time we may be seeing you right now but as usual you're with us and we'll get more audience to get to talk to you very soon thank you so much so I'm going to be moving over to Dr. Daniel I hope you're ready to answer <laughs> this packed questions. Okay, so I would start with this one. Are there any side effects of lying on the back during the third trimester? Um, this person said she notices her baby kicks more when lying on her back. So what do you advise? Are there side effects? Should she continue? Should she stop? Or what do you advise? Okay, um, thank you for the question. Now, when you lie on your back, there's a tendency, uh, you know, the pregnancy is in front. When you lie on your back, the weight of the baby, placenta, and womb can press on the blood vessels um, and give a form of dizziness and possibly can even cause syncopal attack, like loss of consciousness. So we usually do not um, encourage women, especially in the third trimester, to lie on their backs. Now that the baby kicks more while she lies on her back may not be a direct effect. It maybe may actually be struggling. So we advise women who are pregnant in their third trimester to lie on their side. It's more comforting most times. It's, um, it's like a form of recovery and it helps the blood vessels to flow. They add the main elta, the elta flowing well, and the blood vessels returning to the heart can pump well. So it's not really encouraged to lie so much on your back um, in the third trimester. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Daniel. I understand what you said. I hope the person has gotten an answer to her question. So this second question goes this. What causes non-viability at six to seven weeks? This is from a mom who has had a previous miscarriage. Okay, um, non-viability means maybe a scan is done and the scan says non-viable fetus. Well, that would be miscarriage. Um, at six to seven weeks, if a scan is done, abdominal scan should detect a viable baby. A transvaginal scan should also detect it more and give some more specific values about the status of the baby. If you follow the class, we'll find out that six to seven weeks is part of the first trimester. And as I said, 80% of miscarriages happen in the first trimester and up to 50% of that is due to congenital anomalies in the baby. So um, we may not be able to answer directly what may have caused it, it just means that um, there's been a miscarriage. However, um, there's a part I call the missed miscarriage, meaning the baby dies inside and the body is not able, is not making any attempt to bring it out. And it's discovered only during scan. If you go through it, and I believe you can also go through a miscarriage um, leg, um, talk, anything could cause it. It's just a miscarriage in the first trimester. Maternal infection, and the gamut of things we have um, saved there. Thank you. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So the last question for you is, can a small or big fibroid cause a miscarriage? Okay, yeah, I know when I mentioned um, fibroids, there will be questions on fibroids. Yes. Yeah. Well, directly, we would not want to associate every miscarriage to fibroid or every fibroid to miscarriage like, ah, okay, because there's a fibroid there'll be a miscarriage however there are things that can happen to the fibroid and it will be a threat to the pregnancy if the fibroid undergoes some degenerative changes what we call them red degeneration in pregnancy and women who have fibroid and are pregnant would observe that at some time there may be pain serious serious pain which could trigger several things that will result in miscarriage. Secondly, if the fibroid is located, um, how do I say, Lo located where the baby should be or is impinging on the, the canal where the baby, is, the cavity where the baby is supposed to be, it can even cause um, non-implantation of the baby and all of that and can cause miscarriage. But please, that is, um, fibroid doesn't, doesn't equal to there will be a miscarriage, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dr. Daniel, this may be the last time we'll be seeing you now, yeah. but as usual, you're with us and the audience can get to still talk to you and answer their questions much later when they join the prayer class. Thank you so much, sir, for today. You're welcome. So over to you, Nurse Weezer. Are you ready for us? Yes, I am. All right. Thank you. So um, this first question is, is cervical check, cervical checks, are they usually painful? You know, they call it like sweep or something. Are they usually painful? Um, I would say they are quite uncomfortable, not really painful. And this um, discomfort is just because you are, you are going through a, a, a form of pain already. So an extra, you know, that time you don't even want anybody touching you. So the, it's, it's not painful, but it can be quite un un uncomfortable. Thank you so much. Um, the second question, how soon does the mucus plug form in pregnancy? Is it that all women that experience water outbreak because has was just a mucus mixed with blood before going to labor. Should I take it again? Did you understand that? Yes, please take it again. Okay. How soon does the mucus plug form in pregnancy? She now went for that to ask, is it all women that experience water outbreak, like your water breaking? Because has was just a mucus plug mixed with blood before going to labor. Like it wasn't really, let's say, a water breaking or something like that. Yeah. So how soon um, does the mucus plug form in pregnancy? 
um, the, the, the mucosal plug forms as soon as the pregnancy is, is there. And, you know, this, this plug is sort of preventing a descent of, of um, the fetal, uh, of the fetus while the pregnancy is going ongoing. So as soon as the mucosal plug is off, then it sends a, 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 a sort of signal to the womb, to the uterus that it is ready for the descent and for the um, for the dilatation of the cervix and the descent of the um, the presenting parts. Then not everybody. The fact that I mentioned that this the the, the three signs tells you that you are in labor. Not everybody. Um, um, no, it's it's not manifested in everybody. The um, most times, I mean, sometimes the the amniotic the rupture of the membrane is um, can be manually done while the pre, uh, the labor is ongoing. So for some people, it's just the mucosal plug and the the mucosal plug and the contractions. For some, it is the um, the um, the amniotic fluid, yes, the rupture of the membrane. So, but it is quite important that once the amniotic fluid is out, you don't even want to stay at home again because of course the baby is in, the, the, the labor has started already, but with the mucosal, the mucosal plug, it's just a form of telling you that, okay, I'm about to start, the process is about to start. It doesn't really mean that you are in labor, but with the amniotic fluid, when once it ruptures at home, just take your bags and go to the hospital. Thank you. Thank you so much. So the last question for you is, can a mom or less, can a mom that has gone undergone a cesarean section, can she do a six bags? Is there any need for that? Yes, um, well, it might not be necessary, but then it's it's it could actually help too, but because the the, the effect of the relaxing hormone, um, the effect of the relaxing hormone also affects the 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 pelvic area and makes it quite elastic at that moment. So once um the the seat backs would also help, help to counter the effect of the relaxing hormone at that moment. So it doesn't really matter if it's a vagina or a uh, or a what's it called. The cesarean section. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So thank you so much for joining and for giving us your time for this master class. We would still keep in touch with you in our prep class as the audience has a lot of questions for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, before I go to the closing remarks, please, my amazing audience, thank you. You have done so well. Like the comment section has just been buzzing. You've interacted well. Um, before we go off, I would like for you to not to forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, including YouTube that you are on at the moment. Please subscribe to the W community YouTube channel. And there is an ongoing poll right now. I would like for you to just click on it, just look at it and then just tell us what, um, just click on it and the in inquiry form, please, please would like to know more about you. So I'll be introducing the group head, women banking team of the Access Bank, Abiodun Olubitom, please, Come on now to give the closing remarks to this amazing masterclass. Thank you once again, Access Bank, for this amazing initiative. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deborah, and uh, Thank you. good evening, everyone. It's actually been a very exciting and informative evening again from the uh, stable of W community. You can be rest assured by now, I'm sure you are convinced that W is not for any other type of woman but you. Every woman is catered for under the W community. And that's why it's a community, whether you are a woman in business, you are just catering for your family, 
or you are even a young employee professional, W is there for you. And of course, this evening, I've learned so much, even though, well, I've, I think my last pregnancy was about 12 years ago. But I, you know, I remember some of the symptoms. I'm like, oh, okay, was that what it meant? And then I have learned some things I can also share with other women, you know, when they say, oh, this, I feel this way. I'm like, ah, okay, I know what it is now. Uh, so I can almost pass for a small midwife this evening with the lots of information that has been shared. Very, very insightful. Thank you so much, baby Migo. Uh, Nurse Ken Day, Dr. Daniel, Ken Yolaoye, everyone, Nurse Blessing. Thank you so much for joining this, um, bringing all of this, sharing of your wealth of knowledge with our women. And of course, do not forget to um, follow us on our social media platform. If you missed this session, go to our YouTube channel and make sure that you check it and you, know, you can have a replay of all of this. And of course, we are looking forward to having you again next month. Just watch out, it's May and it's Mother's Month. So what else would we be doing that celebrating women? Uh, so men are already jealous, but hey, that's how we are. So thank you so much. Uh, this very superb audience that have waited all till this time learning uh, for the pregnant and expectant parents that actually joined this evening. I wish you uh, a safe delivery. Uh, we care about you and you can let us know when the babies come. Thank you and have a great evening. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to the amazing audience. Thank you. Remember, you are special and the W community is here for you. Thank you so much. Till next time. Bye. This is you every time at the airport waiting in distress when your flight gets cancelled. Or this is you waiting long queues to get transaction done at the bank. You ought to be at the exclusive side of life where we understand the luxury of time and privacy. Going beyond to give you the best customer experience. From the ambience of our lounges with your favorite meals and drinks to keep you relaxed on your travels. To the comfort of our branch lounges to help you get your transactions done quickly and in style with a personal account officer. You can also use our priority service to fast track all your transactions. As an exclusive plus member, you also enjoy unlimited access to all our lounges in over 1,200 locations around the world. Free tickets to movie premieres, art exhibitions and concerts, 24 seven access to medical experts, discounts on luxury hotels and restaurants. Join exclusive plus today. Visit our website to get started access more than banking. I see a light inside of you, so let it shine. It's time to spread your wings and fly, reach for the sky. Get up, get up, don't let nothing hold ya. Get up, get up right now, right now. Get up, get up, don't let nobody tell you that you can't. There is greatness inside of you.
the sun So one day you go shine Access more than banking Pregnancies can come with a lot of concerns and questions this is why you need fully trained medical professionals to help you address them at any time of the day. Why wait for your next appointment when you can have 24-7 access to board-certified experts throughout your pregnancy journey with Preclass? Preclass is designed to guarantee a pleasant pregnancy experience with amazing benefits such as weekly parenting classes that cover everything on pregnancy, childbirth, postpartum care for you and your baby. Sign up for Preclass today and enjoy the ultimate support every pregnant woman deserves. Are you a worker in need of financing for your business, home, car needs, gadgets, or do you just need extra cash to sort a need? We at Access Bank understand how difficult this may be. That's why we have tailored solutions to ensure your needs are met easily and speedily. Our everyday banking products provide a variety of easy loan repayment plans to salary earners. We offer digital loans for Are you struggling with a health challenge? Do you need financial help to access treatments? If yes, Apply now for MHSS, the Maternal Health Service Support, a discounted loan by the W Initiative of Access Bank with low interest rates, no loan fees, flexible repayment plan. This is your best bet for financing your health needs. For more information, visit our website on www.thewcommunity.com or any Access Bank branch nationwide. You can also send an email to wcares at accessbankplc.com. Terms and conditions apply. The MHSS has successfully financed hundreds of health procedures. The next one could be yours. <laughs> <laughs> 